how we do this, we are the truest, got these fangs super sharp, your shit toothless, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish, in the graveyard, acting foolish, finna dance with the devil to no music, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Wow, hello, guys and ghouls. Welcome to Ghoulish. I'm Andrew Hilbert, and uh, you just heard, wow, that's a brand new theme song that we just received from Heathenish Kid, also known as Kelby Losak. Well, Max was very excited to share that song on this, the 100th episode of Ghoulish. But, um, I've got some, um, some bad news for everybody listening. Max isn't here to host the 100th episode. He's actually, um, well, I, I'll just, I'll just have to play this clip. Um, I, 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 I received it mysteriously, but uh, let's just play the clip. Uh, it's from his one of his favorite comedic actors, uh, John Lovitz. Well, hello, this is John Lovitz, and I have a message for the listeners of Max Booth's podcast, Ghoulish. The message, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but your host, Max Booth, has been murdered. And as dead as shit, he was assassinated by a poisoned egg. Most likely by a previous guest of the show. Oh, no. And on episode 100, no less, rest in peace, Max. Well, John Love, it's Max Booth's favorite comedic actor. That's how I found out Max was dead. And that clip was illuminating in so many ways. One, Max was killed by a poison egg. And John Lovitz, a listener of the show, brings up the point that it was probably a past guest. And let me tell you why I think he's correct. Because all of the guests Max has ever had have been thin-skinned nerds, losers. Max, sure, he's a little mean on the internet. He's known to have a flame tongue to certain Twitter bozos. That doesn't mean you get to kill him. No. Here's what's going to happen, folks. I decided to investigate on my own. Because I'm such a good friend of Max Booth's. Threes. I decided that I would contact every single guest of, on Ghoulish and have them send in little eulogies. So they gain some knowledge, some clues, a peek into their twisted mindset. We know a few things, folks. We know that John Lovitz believes it's uh, is a past guest. And I, and I tend to agree with John Lovitz. So let's just get right into it. You heard that theme song. Dancing with the devil, singing on top of graves, probably swinging dick around, twisted nipples. Quite a perverted brain came up with that. What's his name? Heathenish Kid, a.k.a. Kelby Losack itself. A reference to a ball sack. I am not going to take it anymore. We're going to listen to Kelby Losack. If you want me to be honest, I don't, I don't really think Max is dead. I think he's just like pulling some Tom Sawyer type shit. Like he wants to hear people grieving and moaning and like, cause he does shit like that. You know, he does shit for attention and shit like. He's always like, yeah, I got a movie out, guys. And it's like, uh, yeah, that, that that's cool, Max. It's like, man, I've been flying all over the world. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, homie. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I, 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 I run a press. My new book is out. It's like, oh, what, Max? What do you want? Like, I, I think it's just another one of those, like, little attention gimmicks, if you want me to be honest. 
But if he's dead, you know, that sucks. Wow. Did you hear the jealousy in Kelby's voice? I'm sorry you never filmed a movie, Kelby. I'm sorry you don't run a successful press that publishes hundreds of unknown voices a year. I'm sorry Max likes to talk about his successes. What do you got? Oh, 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 you don't want to be a part of the fame. Oh, it shines too bright. You might get sunburn. Well, then why did you make a theme song, Kelby? Let me tell you that. You want to ride those coattails. And you think I forever become part of Max's story by killing the motherfucker. I'm suspicious of you, Mr. Losak. I'm very suspicious. But that's not all who sent in eulogies. Okay. We've got another person who sent in a eulogy. Cynthia Paleo. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. A woman might have killed Max. Hey, yo, it's Sina. Somebody, I ain't gonna say who, somebody called me to tell me that Max Booth the Third was murdered? Look, fuck that guy. He's He owes me money. He took my cell phone charger. Somebody better call me up and tell me where this motherfucker's buried because I'm gonna go and dig his ass up and check his pockets and check for my fucking cell phone charger. Sina, 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 Sina. A cell phone charger? You murdered a man by shoving an egg down his throat? A poison egg, no less, over a cell phone charger? Now you want to desecrate his grave by digging into his pockets? He was buried with nothing, as he lived with nothing. No one showed up to his funeral. Very suspicious. You even answered my call, telling you, please, send something in. Eulogize our my good friend Max. I don't even know what to say. But let's just check out, possibly, a past podcast guest and someone very recently published by Max. Todd Kiesling. Max Booth III is dead. Uh, That's what I heard, anyway. A poisoned egg or something. Murder. You know, I can't can't imagine why someone would do that to him, though. I mean, yeah, sure, he could be snarky at times, but he wasn't a bad guy. It's not like he tweeted incessantly about a goddamn hotel, owls, coconuts, vague statements about things he can't talk about, that goddamn movie, that goddamn podcast, goddamn Stephen King, some goddamn cursed media book, some book about touching the night, which seems inappropriate. (sighs) Yeah, I don't know why someone would do that. I guess they decided they needed to do something. Hmm. Hmm. Jokes based off titles of Max's work. Someone clearly obsessed with Max. And also a hint of jealousy. You see, folks, Kelby and Todd, they themselves are very, very obsessed with Max and can't admit it. Cena just wants her cell phone charger back. I, a crime of passion with for Cena, but Todd and Kelby, this goes way deeper. Way deeper. Very interesting. Suspicious. Suspicious, yes. Todd, you just rose to the top of the list, my friend. But let's listen to uh, two dear friends of Max's. Or they pretend to be, maybe. Miguel and Zach. Both on previous episodes, separately, of Ghoulish. Hey man, what's up? What's up, bro? How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, for sure. Been a while. Yeah, it's been a bit. How you been? Good. I've been good. I'm like glad COVID's over. I'm ready to go out and, you know, hang out. Fuck yeah, let's touch. Let's touch dicks. Bro, oh, man, you hear about Max? Max, Max who? No, I didn't hear about Max. I don't know what you're either. talking about. Max, Max Booth. Ma- that I can't talk about. 
Max, while that is that that thing is on, right? That red dot is. Oh yeah, I was recording some uh, for Max's eulogy. Uh, the, I don't want to go to the funeral. It's like... Yeah, I didn't. I don't want to go to that thing either. But I can't. Oh, so I'm not, not supposed to like legal. I'm not supposed to legally. Can you? It, but that's not on, right? All right, I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. Yeah, just turn. turn okay, thanks, man. The light's still on though. It's like. No, that's charging. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, got you. Got Yeah, I was just. I'm nervous about it because like, you you heard about how he died, right? It was. Um, sorry, my dog's messing with you right now. Um, yeah, it was like some green egg. It was yeah, like a poison a green egg. egg? I, no, I didn't. I, I I hadn't heard about that. I mean, that's fucked up, right? Yeah, but I, you know what? You know what's funny though? I heard that. I heard that he died on the shitter. <laughs> that's not. That's terrible. <laughs> nah, dude, that's funny as shit. What? Cause I don't really, like, I don't really like the guy. Well, it was the, that weird smell. He had the weird smell, and like, he was always like, he was always skeezing for money and shit. You yeah. know, like, I went to like three of those readings, and he was like always asking for cash. Yeah, it, for for me, it was the fucked up haircut. He just shot. He just shot himself to death. So you know, like, sorry, this is terrible, man. But, but so you know, like, when you die, they say your fingernails keep growing and your hair keeps growing. Like, does he keep shitting? I. That's what I heard. That he that they had to have a closed casket funeral because because the shit was gonna keep on coming and it was it gonna, was gonna it was flood gonna flow the, over like overflow. Yeah, I mean, not, honestly, that's why I don't want to go to the funeral because well, like the, the shit. Yeah, I'm on house arrest too, so I can't really go. But like, I I, I wouldn't have gone anyway. I wasn't invited. Yeah, I mean, I he, have gone anyway. he never he never sent the the invites. You know, he's like, oh Max Boo story time. He I mean, he never sent me the invites. Yeah. So you know, I showed up to every single one of those, thinking you know uh, maybe maybe he would read my manuscript and you know maybe he would pass it on to the people oh no he's, that, he's he was mr big time yeah he was mr oh, he big, was gonna he, be the next biggest thing in Hollywood. you know he told me that he was gonna put my script in front of you know a lot of a lot of eyes you know there were there were multiple companies um the people who did ghost story the people who did uh scott pilgrim and he was looking for like a tit for tat sort of thing like you rub his back he rubs your balls well i don't think he just i think he was just would you rub those balls yeah i, I would you would have i mean i would have because I mean, rest I, in peace that's, right? well not, I'm, not really rest in peace i'm trying i would do anything to get my my scripts out there um i mean <sighs> did you even see his his new movie I mean, it looks stu- uh, like it looks stupid, dude. I don't know, man. Like, oh, it looks dumb. Oh, 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 we, we got, got we got stuck, we got in, stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, maybe there's some poop in the bathroom. Oh, uh, there's poop jokes. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of poop 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 humor in that movie, and it's like I think Adam Sandler was like also in the movie too. Yeah. I, I know he's executive producing. His it. name is literally Max Poop. I I I. Yeah. So fucking yeah. Uh, anyways, but I mean, like, but okay, but okay. So you like you have chickens. Like, have you ever gotten sick from a from an egg? Yeah, yeah, it's this horrible diarrhea. Well, um, I used to, you were like, you were doing like, exper- you're like experimenting with like pickling eggs and stuff. Yeah, well, uh, no, 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 it's actually been a long time since I actually haven't done that. I was, there, I was like two weeks ago, and you had like a whole jar of like, and like, what was the skull and crossbones ones like? What was? Uh, oh yeah, no, I just like to put those. Uh, you know, it's like a design thing. You said don't touch it. Yeah, because I I thought you. you I mean, you don't like pickled eggs, oh, right? Oh, no, I hate yeah. pickled eggs. Yeah, so I, so I was just looking out for more you. Than I hate Max poop. I I I. Yeah, me too, man. Yes. Yeah. So, I actually I don't hate him. I got you know, it's I don't really even know him. I uh, felt sorry for him. Yeah, it was more of like uh, any any feelings that I had was more like me feeling sorry for the guy, and you know, rest him. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in yeah, man. Yes. Fuck them. I, those are the like the kind of the the things that my lawyer's been telling me to say. But what? Why? Why do you have lawyers involved? Well, you. I mean, you heard about uh, everyone's throwing this suspicion. You know, oh, Zag, you you you're like the egg man. You you've given all your friends eggs, and it's like, well, yeah, I get I give I my fr- your eggs. I give my friends. Yeah, but I've given you eggs. And yeah, and then the I throw them away because they threw them in the bullshit. trash. Yeah, because you feed them Mountain Dew or something. <laughs> Is that why they're all green? They're like radi- well, radiating green. Some 
chickens lay green eggs, <laughs> and some eggs are they start off white and then you pickle them. And this you, is the Looney Tunes. The, the chickens don't lay green eggs. What is this, uh, Doctor Seuss? I'm look. It's just the way you treat the egg, and, and no one's ever gotten sick off of my eggs. I've never gotten sick off of my eggs. Speaking of anti-Semitic authors, like Dr. Seuss, Max, Max Booth. Booth. I think they're related, too. Uh, yeah. Man, I don't know. Well, so I was recording this thing. Do, do you want to jump in on it with me, or...? Um, I don't think legally that I that I should, but like I'll let you get back to it. Um, you know, if you want to just say yeah, you can hang around. For yeah, a bit. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hang around. All right, uh, but just don't let him know that I was here. You know. Well, I mean, he's not gonna hear, right? Or you want to be? Ha- no, no, don't. Can don't you let... imagine being haunted by the ghost of Max Poop? I, I, I. Oh man, I just I can't imagine. He's oh, always oh, at Qu- Megan. Quentin Tarantino is the best director ever. Yeah. <laughs> fucking more. Oh, what if we took a Quentin Tarantino movie and just didn't let him go anywhere? It's just great characters, great dialogue. Alright, let me let me do something real quick. Let me, I mean, you might you might need to come up with the script if you're going to be saying anything nice about the guy. I'll, yeah. I'll let you work on it. Uh, Alright, let's... Uh, hey, uh, I'm sorry that uh, Max, po- uh, Max Booth, he, he was a good, dear friend of mine. Uh, I always have great memories of him. Uh, Zach, don't touch that. Um, so, yeah, like, yo, hit me up if you need anything. Like, um, peace. Hey, is it, <clears throat> is that thing off? Oh, fuck, I forgot to turn it up. Fake on, but now it's really on. I didn't oh. record this whole thing. All right, well, I was I practicing. Just, I just want to say, because now I know it's off, like, man, fuck. Fuck Max Booth, man. Fuck Max Booth. Like, fuck that guy. You guys, you want to get like a t-shirt, Mac, matching t-shirt? That and say, says, fuck man. Rest in shit, you <laughs> little bitch. Well, I have to say, that was the Moby Dick of uh, eulogies. Uh, here's the funny thing. Miguel pretends, pretends the mic isn't on. Sounded like they were recording underwater because he's an informant. I asked him to do this. And Zach, shit for brains, Chapman, walks in, spilling his nuts out, saying, oh, is that thing on? And just believes. Just believes I was charging. Like he's never seen a microphone before. Let me tell you something, Zach. You are known as the Eggman. You say no one's gotten sick. However, however, I feed every single egg you give me to my daughter first. Okay, just to make sure it's safe for me to consume. She got sick once, and I take her to the hospital, and I thought to myself, well, I'm glad I didn't eat that egg. And sometimes I give those eggs to my dog. Yeah. Remember Comrade 1? I don't want to tell you how Comrade 1 passed, but it was one of your goddamn eggs, Zach. And Miguel, don't think you're off the hook just because you're an informant for me. That's exactly what a guilty person would do. Oh, ooh, I'll just record my friend confessing, and that'll take all the blame off me. You two are in cahoots. You never leave each other's buttholes. I know it. Every time I see you, Zach is hanging on you like a kid on his daddy. Let me tell you guys, I'm very suspicious. Very suspicious. Let's hear the next clip. Let's do it. Josh Ballerman. Oh, this is such terrible news to hear of the death by poisoned egg of Max Booth III. Mm, The fact that I own the egg factory shouldn't implicate me at all, of course. In fact, it should underscore how difficult this is for me, how shocking, and uh, and we, we maintain the cleanest facilities, and we care deeply about everyone who eats any of our eggs. And besides, if I did have a poisoned egg in my possession, I would have saved it for someone more worthy of murder, like mother or father, auntie or uncle or grandpa, grandma, or other grandpa, grandma, or my 
Well, <clears throat> oh, anyway, it's a terrible tragedy. Terribly sad. And I only hope that, uh, that he rests in, in eggshells. I mean, in uh, pieces of egg. Josh, couldn't even bring yourself to step five feet away from the laundry machine you were running. Unbelievable. The lack of respect. You know, I feel that there's something going on here. Josh also has wild success in Hollywood. He's a Hollywood big shot. And then here comes Max, nipping at his heels. The first sign of of success, uh, Josh drops a poison egg into Max's mouth. Straight from his own asshole. Josh, 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 can you hear me? That's the shade finger pointing right at you, my friend. Okay. Next up, Jessica Leonard. It was recently published by uh, Max. Probably not very happy with the uh, with the way he advertised the book. Uh, said very few words about it. Um, and also a past host, of course. Otherwise, there'd be no suspicion. Hello, and uh, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Jessica Leonard, and I'm the author of Antioch, which was actually published by Max's Press, Perpetual Motion Machine, or PMMP. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> when I first heard of Max's time, like tragic death, I have to admit I was just so nervous, devastated. And then when I heard how he died, wow, that sounds 100% like a tragic accident and not at all like foul play of course naturally these these things happen you know it's worth mentioning here that i do live 985 miles away from max and people know where i am at all times definitely could not disappear for 15 hours and i've never met him in person but you know i'm not here to talk about the ingenious horrible accident that took max's life too soon just in time no I'm here to remember the life and accomplishments of Max Booth III. Max was, of course, a, a pioneer, a visionary, a swindler, a su superb podcaster and editor um, who never once cheated anyone. It was more like a hundred times. And when I think of all the people who will benefit, be affected by Max's death, I can't help but feel pride, pa pained, by this loss to the literary world. And if his tragic death, his tragic accidental death, brings more attention and sales to the books and authors he cheated published, then I'm sure that's what he would have wanted. Because Max was nothing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got, I got a little choked up. Um, nothing if not giving a kind of an asshole. And I'm sure he will... Um, be remembered exactly the way that he deserves. Thank you so much for having me on. Jessica, Jessica, come a, come a little closer here. I want to let you in on a little secret here. 985 miles is none too far for the great United States Postal Service to mail a poisoned egg to Max. He can't help himself. He opens a box from the USPS. See, seeing that it's from one of his greatest friends and podcast guests, Jessica Leonard says, wow, wow, she got me an egg, eats it, has no idea you laced it with something spooky and dies, heart attack. Listen, Jessica, I thought what you did was real clever, real clever. Oh, he's very kind of an asshole. I thought that was real funny. Real funny. Well, you won't laugh much in a state penitentiary 985 miles away from Max. It's a federal crime to mail death machines via the USPS. Okay? Next, Lucas Mangum. Yeah, well, um, I guess the... Uh, 
perpetual motion machine was not so perpetual. Uh, the editor-in-chief, Max Booth, was murdered by one of us. Not me, of course, but, but one of us. Um, yeah, I don't know. Poison egg? That seems a little eggy to me, but, um, you know, if it's, uh, on Fox News, it must be true. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss, miss you. I thought you would be perpetually motioning, machining. Rest in peace, brother. Lucas. Shifty little fella, isn't he? Not so little, though. He's quite tall and skinny. And let me tell you something about Lucas. Heard it on Fox News. Heard it on Fox News. Yeah, he knows what to listen to. That's America's newsroom. And let me tell you something, folks. When I asked for these eulogies, I didn't say anything about anyone being a suspect in Max's death. In fact, I didn't even say he was murdered. So, Mr. Mangum, immediately... You put suspicion on yourself, my friend, by saying, murdered by one of us. Do you have a tracking device on me? Are you listening to me think? Are you listening to me do things? You're watching Fox News, my friend. And I heard the lead singer of Trapped is now a spokesperson for Fox. Oh, my God. Lucas, you might be in the clear. Because the next podcast guest under suspicion is Trapped's number one fan. Joshua Chaplinsky. Hi, this is Joshua Chaplinsky. I'm the author of The Paradox Twins, Whispers in the Ear of a Dreaming Ape, and Kanye West Reanimator. And I just wanted to put that out there, state that up front, because even though this is a sad occasion, it's also a great promotional opportunity for me. So go out there, buy my books, can't buy Max's books anymore. I mean, you can, but it really won't benefit him, just those he left behind, so what have they ever done for us? Anyway, what else can I say? This is sad news. Doesn't really come as a shock, though. Max had a lot of enemies. He threatened to fuck a lot of bugs, which, it, uh, if we're being honest, made a certain author in particular very unhappy, so might want to take a look at that guy. Word on the street is he wanted to annihilate Max, if you catch my meaning. Anyway, I know the higher-ups at Lit Reactor didn't always appreciate Max's unique sensibilities as a writer, especially someone whose name rhymes with Paul Blart. Max also had a fascination with the bodily fluids of Pennywise the Clown, fascination which no one else seemed to share, and he was constantly pitching articles about it, or sneaking references into other unrelated articles. As an editor, it became really hard to keep up with. There finally came a point where we were all like, what are we going to do about Max? We need to do something. You know, we need to do something about Max. And of course, there's slush readers everywhere who had to deal with the deluge of rejected pizza horror stories in the wake of Tales from the Crust, one of the most ill-advised horror anthologies of all time, which just so happens to feature my story, Sonobio Pizzeria, so go pick that one up. But enough about Max. The person my heart really goes out to in this situation is his partner, Laurie. I can only imagine what she's going through. Mere words seem so hollow, which is why I'm setting mine to music. At the very least, I'm hoping this brightens your day in this tumultuous time. This one's for you, Laurie. And don't you cry tonight for Max Booth now, Laurie. And don't you cry tonight And don't you cry I swear I didn't kill him so we could be together, yeah Don't you cry tonight Yowza so Joshua, second person to weaponize Max's titles against him. Very interesting. 
Uh, I want to say something about that trapped cover you did at the end. You really did a good job of deconstructing it. You actually found the emotion in the song that Trapped is so great at trapping within their writing. Let me tell you something, Josh. I knew you couldn't escape a promotional opportunity. You didn't want to send this. You didn't want to do it. It took me weeks to get it out of you. And then you sit there and I say, hey, 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 drop a little line about how you just published a book called The Paradox Twins. Drop a little line. And then all of a sudden, five minutes later, I got this. You disgust me. Next, Jessica McHugh. Great author. Published by Max. Also on the show. Great friend of the show. Max spoke fondly of her. Very fondly of her. And let's just hear what she had to say about Max's untimely death. I was so sad to hear the news. Just, I mean, uh, shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I mean, my husband and I were just talking about him the other night. His work, how much we loved him. How funny he was. Oh my gosh. He had that, like... That really amazing kind of straight man quality sometimes that like you didn't know if he was kidding or not, but it was like hilarious no matter what. It was just effortless, you know, especially his characters. You know, they were witty and charming. And okay, all right, sometimes a little villainous, but he made it work because they were all pieces of him. And I swear, the way he romanced Miss Piggy and the great Muppet caper... I pretty much just fell in love with him right there. I mean, but for me, that cameo in So I Married an Axe Murder is just, it's absolute, what? I'm sorry, hold on one second. My husband is yelling something at me. What was that? Oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm recording the, the Charles Grodin memorial thing. Who? Who? Who the fuck is Max Booth the third? Fuck, I gotta read these emails better. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, rest in peace, I guess. I'm just glad Max isn't alive to hear that, Jessica. He spoke so fondly of your work. He, uh, he just loved it so much. And he always told me that you were the next big thing. The next big thing in horror. And uh, he was going to adapt one of your, uh, your, your books into a screenplay and get it made with all the big shots. Uh... And uh, then you talk about some Miss Piggy lover? Some Charles Grodin motherfucker? Who's that? Who's that? When did he die? Huh? I don't get it. I don't understand how you could just piss away your friends so quickly. You're doing a good job of acting, though, princess. I'll tell you why. Because you're acting as if you don't know him. But we all know you are a fan of eggs. And we all know that you sent Max egg salad sandwiches quite often. We know the story. You're at the top of the list. Next is, uh, next folks, I got to calm down. <sighs> We're going to listen to a clip from Sarah Reed. This is Sarah Reed and uh, we come together today to share in our grief over the loss of our dear friend Mike who was such a treasure to so many what what who oh Max Max Booth Max Booth the third why oh okay uh um so I guess we're here for Max wow uh I thought he died years ago but okay um Gosh, last time I saw Max, uh, must have been four or five years ago, he was taking me out for Mother's Day brunch at the Egg and I. I don't think many people knew he was my kid. I don't tell people for obvious reasons. Um, he was so fucking rude to the waiter. Uh, anyway, I just want to make sure everyone knows I'm not responsible for how he turned out. So, actually, can we get that on the headstone? Oh, no stone. A body farm? Oh, good for him. Uh, glad he decided to do something productive. Wait, it's free then, right? Okay. Okay, good. Um, well, let's all head to the Egg and I. 
and celebrate Max, I guess. Uh, tip your waiter. I had no idea Max's mother was Sarah Reed. It's also quite strange, second person, to not even know he was dead. Not even know who he was. Oh, oh, I just thought he was already dead. I will say this. There was a grain of truth to her story. I've been to many restaurants with Max, and he was vicious. He hissed at all the waiters. He snapped at all the waitresses. And he looked for a busboy, and he threw his glassware down. He said, this egg is overdone. I like it runny. I like it runny. I like it to drip out of my mouth. I like it to seep out of my butthole when I boof it in the bathroom. Go get me a good egg. This egg is overdone and disgusting. That's exactly what he said last time we were at the Buffalo Wild Wings. And I said, Max, they don't even serve eggs here. They serve chickens. And he said, yes. A chicken is just an overdone egg, you dumb motherfucker. Next, Stephen Graham Jones. Surely, nobody, surely, surely he won't get confused for anybody else. Like the other two. Max. 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 Hold on, let me. Hold on a sec. Max. No? I thought I'd have a Max in my contacts. Um, Max. You know, I know, I know Dax. Dax from Deep Space Nine, of course. And I know another Dax. I don't know another Dax. I know of another Dax. Isn't that that blonde actress's husband who made that movie Hit and Run with that Lincoln Continental? The baddest Lincoln Continental I've ever seen on screen or anywhere, to tell you the truth. Um, that is the, the blonde actress's wife was in that movie with the vampire puppets at the end. Um, Sarah Marshall. So I'm forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, but we're talking about Max, somebody named Max. Um, why don't I think of the old movie Black Hole when I hear Max? What was, was that big robot in there named Max? I'm probably getting it confused with Lost in Space somehow. Um, I also think of Ernest Borgnine when I hear the name Max. I don't know what's up with that. Is there a Muppet named Max? Uh, there's got to be. There's a lot of Muppets, aren't there? There used to be Muppets on the, Bar Muppets on the Barbara Mandrell show, even, so there's probably... I don't know. Maybe there was a Muppet named Max. There was a, a dog Muppet named Cat, I remember. I like I like that Muppet a lot. Um, Max. Max. Um, I shouldn't be doing out loud ellipses like this, should I? Um, the Max Planck Institute, right? That is where that um, guy, Savante Pabo, um, sequences Neanderthal genes, genomes. He does all kinds of genetic work. It's not just him. It's an institute. He's like the head of it, I guess, or he's the one we always hear about. I don't know. But, um, you know, as far as amazing things in the last 20, 30 years, let me tell you, sequence in the Neanderthal gene, gene, gene has been up there for me. That's been the top. But we're talking about this, this Max person. Um, Max. Isn't there an old... Yeah, there is. There's an old Michael Jordan DVD called Air Max. This is like from, shoot, early 2000s, I think it was. I used to have that. I think I gave it to Goodwill finally. Maybe I still got it. I don't know. But, um, and you know, if there's a DVD about that, there's probably a shoe named Air Max, if I had to guess. I don't really know the, the like, shoe stuff very well, to tell you the truth. But Max, Max, I mean... Yeah, I just keep coming back to Ernest Borgnine. I don't know why that is. Why do I think of Ernest Borgnine? He played a lot of roles in his, you know, career. So I'm guessing he probably played a Max at some point. I probably saw that movie. But, um, oh, there's Max Gladstone. He's a writer. But, I mean, I was just on a panel with Max, Max Gladstone like two weeks ago, I think. And it wasn't like a Weekend to Bernie situation. He was alive and talking and stuff. So I don't think it's that Max. Um, Max, Max, do I know a Max? I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe I'd better do some research and get back on this. Um, but I mean, I'm sorry, whatever happened to Max happened to Max, of course. I'm sure it was terrible. And I can't even imagine how it involved an egg. I mean, I'm guessing it must have been a hard boiled egg because how does a 
egg that's not boiled. You just call that like a natural egg, a normal egg, a not boiled egg. I don't really know. Like an egg that can break and crack and have a yolk that's all runny. Like that kind of egg. I don't see how that kind of egg can kill you. If you get it caught in your throat, you just swallow or spit it out and you're good. So maybe he choked on a whole hard boiled egg. He was trying to do a cool hand Luke thing. I don't know. I don't think I know any people who would try to do that. But I mean, it could have been a deviled egg. That the I guess somebody can poison deviled egg or something. And I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would ever eat a deviled egg. Those things to me are like when they're on. They're at a party that I'm on the other side of the room from those eggs because they, they do not smell good. But um, maybe this Max person loved those things and somebody knew it. And they put poison in that egg and he ate it and you know conked. It happens. Um, so Max, um, Max, uh, probably knew you or know you, or I guess knew it has to be past tense if Max isn't around anymore. Right. So Max, um, listen, bub, this is for you. Um, this is actually empty, but I just had it sitting there. I'll take a drink from it later and I'll think of you. It'll probably be iced tea. That's what I drink mostly. So, um, Max later, dude. Is it still on? I don't know who that Max person was. It doesn't matter. All right. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry I had to inflict that upon the listeners of this fine show. I'll say this. I don't think Stephen Graham Jones killed Max, but I do think he delights in Max's death, which is why he would do something so rude as to name every single Max in pop culture, in history, that he could think of, just to show everybody that he thinks Max Booth III is a nobody. I feel, sir, I feel that you have disgraced your own legacy by being so rude to a dead man. You don't dance on a grave of a man as great as Max Booth III, so good they named him three times. Get out of here, Stephen Graham Jones. I know you're innocent, but I don't like you, and you're out. Next, acclaimed illustrator, acclaimed author, wonderfully funny person, Betty Rocksteady. Hi. Um, wow. This is a recording I never thought I'd have to make, but, um... Of course, I'm very sad, but first and foremost, I'm really happy to be asked to speak publicly on this because um, I've been having what I can only describe as a supernatural experience since Max's death. Um, I guess I should, the morning I woke up, the day he died, I didn't know he was dead yet, and I went down to the kitchen, and all the eggs in my fridge had been smashed against the floor and of course I thought that was very strange and but I didn't know what to make of it so I just cleaned them up and went from there and um a few hours later I heard about Max's untimely death and everything just kind of clicked for me because Max and I as you know we've been friends for a lot of years online and um we'd made a pact a long time ago that if one of us died first we would come back to haunt the other one and you know for scientific purposes and just because it sounds really fun to haunt someone right like what else are you can do when you're dead you may as well haunt somebody um so yeah so I once I realized that I was like oh my god is his presence here like Max could be here haunting me right now and maybe there's something he wants to communicate from the other side and so I, I just first I spoke out and I was like Max Booth the third are you here do you have a message for me and um I guess you would call what happened next poltergeist activity but It really seemed more to me like Max is just a very clumsy ghost and he was kind of falling down and knocking things over in the house and um, there wasn't really a way to communicate. Like there were a couple grunts of pain. Again, I think he was just like falling down. I don't know. It was kind of embarrassing. So I got the Ouija board out and um, this is where, you know, the supernatural really got to me because like I could feel a presence. I could feel him moving the planchette and what he spelled out was the letters pen p-e-n the number 15 and then the word club so pen 15 club and he spelled it out over and over pen 15 club pen 15 club and then the Ouija board hurled at the wall and you know since then everything's been really quiet so that was the message he wanted to get across pen 15 club 
Um, and, you know, I haven't Googled it or anything because I made a tattoo appointment, actually. Um, just kind of in memory of Max, I'm going to get Pen15 tattooed on my arm. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that provides some comfort to you guys. Pen15 Club. Um, yeah, okay. So, rest in peace, Max. Uh, condolences to Lori. Well, you know, um, yeah. Bye. What a sweet and delightful person. Wow. You know, maybe we should hear from more people that Max has actually published, not just simply podcast guests going around trying to promote themselves all the goddamn time. That was a very sweet clip. In the Pin 15 Club, I have to look this up. Max's ghost seems delightful. I'd love to be haunted by him. Thank you, Betty. You are off the suspect list. Let's hear uh, W.P. Johnson. Also, someone Max has published... Hello everyone, this is W.P. Johnson, author of The Eight Eyes That Watch You Die, and I am saddened. No wait, not saddened, I am surprised to hear that Max Booth has been murdered instead of committing suicide like we all hoped he would. After all, he did write They Might Be Demons, Exhibit A, and the evidence that the Bram Stoker Awards doesn't read any of their nominees. But that's okay, HWA, we all make mistakes, except for the person who poisoned Max. That person did me, nay, the world, a huge favor. Max was the so-called author of seven novels, all of which I assume were written while locked in a bathroom. His most recent We Need to Do Something is the most autobiographical in regards to his affinity for closed-in spaces and drinking from toilets. Here are some reviews of We Need to Do Something. Julie writes, This book is a prime example of why I never read books that don't have at least 100 verified reviews. I kept thinking they will get out of the bathroom soon and the book will get good. Nope. Here's the ending. It's going to be okay. 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 For five pages. Worst book I can remember reading. Our next review is Julie, again, who hated it so much she decided to warn the world a second time. Julie writes, what did I just read? This book was just weird. I had a decent enough beginning. But the gore and the weirdness just intensified, wondering what kind of drugs the author was on. No drugs at all, Julie. Just the high of his own flatulence as he typed away on a laptop, numbing his already toilet-ridden thighs. CJ writes, I wanted to like this more, but I felt like the characters were too unlikable, not like the ones we're supposed to dislike. And the ending just didn't feel like any kind of finality. There were too many things unexplained. I'm intrigued enough to check out his other work, though. Don't bother, CJ. Max, too, is unlikable, as evidenced by the bloated number of people who wish him dead. Bloated, much like his own overburdened toilet, a.k.a. Booth's porcelain muse. Misty writes, DNF. Not only did I not finish this, but I barely started it. I hope the tornado won. The tornado didn't win, Misty. But we all won when Max ate that poison egg while sitting on his own pissing throne and petting another fecal-inspired novel. Michelle writes, I didn't get past the fact that they were stuck in the bathroom because a tree was in front of the door. I've never had a bathroom door in any house I have lived in that opened out. Well, Misty, to be fair to Max, he's never left his bathroom, and so he wouldn't know or remember which day the door opens. Only that it locks from the inside, and it's the only thing that's kept his wife from killing him before the egg did. Lastly, by Vicky, who also posted this on Goodreads, she writes, What can I say about this drivel? since I only made it 16% before I chose not to waste any more time with it. Two stars. I am flushing this one. So there you have it, folks. Offer Max Booth, creator of, quote, bathroom noir and other terrible genres, is dead. And the list of suspects is many. While we may assume one of his former ghoulish guests to be the culprit, his reviews tell a different story. One that is far better and more worth reading than his, quote, novel, We Need to Do Something. The truth is, anyone with eyes and an understanding of the English language has all the reason in the world to poison someone who writes his best work while hunched over his bowl, straining to push through his writer's block. If there's anything I've learned after reading We Need to Do Something, it's this. No judge in the world would convict. So come clean, murderer. Your fans can't wait to meet you. Again, this is W.P. Johnson and 
I recorded this from Max's writing room. Did I kill Max? No, but I wish I had. WP. WP, let me tell you. WP, does a P stand for urination? Let me ask you something. Or maybe it stands for wet poop, Johnson. As a frequent backwards-facing toilet masturbator, I could hear the distinct sound of a ball sack slapping against a thigh. I could hear. You know how I know the sounds of such things? It's because I am well aware of them. I create those sounds myself. And I could tell that you were masturbating to the thought of Max Booth being dead, reading those evil, semi-literate reviews. These people don't understand art. They demand things they don't understand, and they're pissed off when they don't get it. Well, wet poo-poo Johnson, let me tell you something, my friend. Masturbating in a dead man's toilet will get you cursed if the hangman don't get you first. Next, we'll have to listen to someone Max has never published. Probably for good reason. Alan Baxter. Max Boo the third died, huh? Wow. Pretty sad, I guess. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some people who are sad. Not like the arsehole didn't have it coming. I mean, let's be honest, I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. Like, I mean, I'm guessing it wasn't natural causes. Not like he just kind of got sick and killed over. I mean, it's probably a line of people ready to finish him off. Be interesting to know who did it, wouldn't it? I mean, could be anyone. Could be that guy he ripped off. Could be that girl he owed money to. I mean, hell, he knows what he did to me. I suppose that's motive. <laughs> Not that anyone could prove anything. Let's be honest. I think there's a lot of people with a lot of grudges. But it would take a lot to prove anything about any of them. I suppose the one thing they've all got in common is that they're better off without Max Booth. I guess I'll miss his podcast. That could be fun sometimes. He talked to some cool people. But yeah, uh, I'm not surprised. Rest in peace, Max, I guess, if you can. Something uh, suspicious about the Queen's English, isn't it, Governor? Something very suspicious about the Queen's English, bloody fire help, Governor! That's all I have to say about that, Mr. Alan Baxter. Might need to get Sherlock Holmes on the case. Maybe, maybe Watson, Watson, pass the cocaine, please. British slimy bastards! Next, I, I won't even dignify that little confessional poetry that uh, Alan Baxter with further comment. So we'll just move on to B.R. Jaeger. Hey, this is B.R. Jaeger. Uh, I just wanted to offer my condolences to Max's friends and family. I didn't know Max very well, um, and truth be told, what I did know, I didn't exactly like. I mean, it was really cool that he let me guess on the show, like for real, um, but afterward he just kept hitting me up for money, like every day, like every single day. It was so weird, it was so inappropriate, just creeping in my DMs every single day. And then he tried to rope me into this pyramid scheme thing, like it was selling specialty knives or some shit, and it's just like, Dude, I'm so sorry that you're hurting, but come on, really. Now I have like 500 boxes of these terrible knives in my living room, and they're like the shittiest knives, like for real. They can't even cut through a can. 
I don't know. Anyway, Max was fine, I guess. It sucks that he's dead. If his next of kin is listening, I've got 500 extremely shitty knives that are yours now. So get at me, please. Someone sounds a little miffed at their own financial problems. Blaming the dead for your own financial illiteracy is not a good look, my friend. Oh, you bought 500 shitty knives? Could they cut through poisoned eggs? Could they mix a salad? My friend, they probably could. And let me tell you, what better way to show someone the end of their life than a dull tip of a knife on top of a pile of poisoned eggs? Mr. Jaeger, Mr. Jaeger, the pain in your voice is palpable. I'll tell you one thing, though. It's becoming clear to me. Max didn't have very many friends. He had frenemies. John Baltusberger, barefooted Texas weirdo, jiu-jitsu champion, the foremost kaiju poet, this side of the Nile. He's next. Oh, and he's got a lot to say. He can bloviate for hours, this guy. And they call him John Bloviating Baltusberger. I can say these things about him because he knows where I live and he knows I'm itching for a fight, especially if he killed my dear friend Max Booth. Hey, this is uh, John Baltusberger, author of War of Dictates. You know, when I heard that Max Booth III had been murdered, I thought, well, we've lost a guy who's written some books. It's, it's normally a tragedy when anyone dies. Some people considered Max to be a friend, and for others he was an acquaintance. But I believe we have to ask ourselves, did he really measure up to either of those words? As I look into my heart, and I consider the ways that Max has touched me, the answer to that question is a resounding, eh. Now, I've known Max since grade school. We attended St. Jonathan's Episcopalian School for Wayward Catholics, and it was a strange childhood knowing Max. He's always been a bit of a pervert, but not the sort of pervert that you kind of have ambivalent feelings towards, but the sort that you warn people about. You know, I would say to my mom whenever Max was coming over, now mom, watch out, because Max will try to lick your toes. You know, a lot of people think that uh, Stephen Kink is a fursona that Max dreamt up. But the truth of the matter is, is that Stephen Kink is more true to who Max is as a human than Max Booth. Despite Max's predilection for uh, foot buggery, as he liked to call it, he and I stayed in touch. Back in high school at St. Thomas's Superior Eastern Orthodox Community High School, we talked about starting our own business as snake wranglers. Now, my interest was purely one of science. Uh, I wanted to study the way their scaly bodies slid against each other. Max, however, really felt that maybe he could start a cult. Of course, that's ridiculous because no one would ever follow Max Booth III into anything, much less death. But Max was always pushing the limits of what was acceptable to people. He used to ask me, would you spit in my mouth? And I'd say, why? Why would you want me to do that? And he would just cackle and grin at me as though it was self-explanatory. Um, the few times I did, he would swish my spit around in his mouth, make eye contact with me, and moan, just a very soft, uh, uh, which I found deeply disturbing and only slightly erotic. With all of his innumerable failings laid at our feet, along with his bloated and slightly discolored corpse, I feel like maybe we should try to focus on not his shortcomings, but his victories. A lot of you 
may not know this, but Max and I were married for a short time. Nothing romantic, as I said, we were uh, acquaintances at best. But through being married, we were able to adopt a number of foster children and collect government checks for said children. Now, we did have to consummate that on a fairly regular basis for the social workers who came by. They wanted to make sure we were actually in love and actually intimate. And so they would come by once or twice a week with cameras and film our intimacy, which I felt was excessive and could have been mitigated if only Max had moved a little and shown the same amount of passion in his acting as I did. But that aside, eventually our fraud empire crumbled, and due to Max's loose lips, both rectally and otherwise, I was forced to serve a short term in prison for the way we had defrauded the government and fed a certain number of children, more than three, less than eight, to local wildlife to hide the remains. All of that aside, Max was a person who always knew what he wanted and didn't care who he had to push aside or feed the remains to various wildlife in order to get what he wanted. It really comes as no surprise that someone finally got fed up with Max's selfish, indulgent behavior and lovemaking and said enough. Enough with this. I guess what I'm saying is that while I am not saddened by Max Booth III's passing, I am finally, for the first time since our messy divorce and my prison sentence, able to achieve an erection. And so for that, I would like to thank both Max's desiccated corpse and whoever ended my pain. I will say this about John bloviating Baltusberger. I'll say this. The man can enunciate. If you want to skip back maybe 30, 45 seconds, instead of saying surprise, he says surprise. He pronounces the R in that sense. I am very, very surprised at how well this man enunciates. I think it is actually part of a grand image that he creates of himself uh, of innocence. Everything is so calculated. Everything is so perfect and moving. Oh, Max is the one feeding children to various wildlife. John had nothing to do with it. He, oh, he got married to Max for some defrauding scheme. But it was Max's fault. It was Max's anal loose lips that, that, that was at fault for, for, for them getting caught. John, you did your time because you did the crime. Okay? Max's loose lips had nothing to do with it. And now you just loving, loving the fact that he's dead disgusts me. And I hope to see you walking around barefoot in my neighborhood so I can stick one of my fucking shoes up your ass, my friend. We'll see whose anal lips are loose then. We'll listen to another Texan. John Wayne. Communale? 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 John Wayne Communale? Hey everyone, this is John Wayne Kamyanali. I'm uh, your favorite traveling idiot. I'm here to congratulate Max Booth III on his... Uh, what is this? Oh. Okay. Um, Max is dead. Max Booth III is dead. This is a different thing I thought I was doing, but uh, congratulations on that uh, as well. Um, dying is one of the best things we can... Uh, do for ourselves and the world out there. So uh, good on you, dude. Good, good on you. Um, I get. I guess I should. Uh, you know, Max. He was an okay guy. I uh, can't say I'm gonna m miss him necessarily. He will be missed by who I'm. Um, not exactly sure, but there would be be people out there uh, that might miss him in some capacity. Uh, just not many, but. You know, he was a uh, he was a fine gentleman. Um, he I saw him do many wonderful things. Steal parking. Um, he was a very uh, a huge proponent of Batman um, and the Predator. 
I think he did a small stint with Predator Guy on broad, off Broadway, I believe. Um, I don't think that that went anywhere, much like most of his uh, endeavors. Anyway, you know, I gotta say, um, you know, so Max is is dead. Uh, fuck. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, you know what? Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Could not have happened to a nicer guy, you know? Uh, but I guess, um, I, what does this even say? Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, he's, he's dead. So, uh, congratulations to you, Max, and, uh, and everyone involved in, in this, uh, wonderful occasion. And, uh, I hope that it brings you, uh, you know, uh, all the things that, you know, you, whatever. Okay. So, uh, anyway, John Wayne here, uh, you know, congrats, Max. Uh, I, here's to another, hun- uh, nothing. John Wayne, I've got a few traveling idiots that are my favorite, and none of them are named John Wayne Communale. The utter vacancy in which you delivered Max's eulogy tells me that you weren't even smart enough to murder my friend Max. You wouldn't even know how to hard boil an egg, let alone slip some cyanide in one. I believe you're innocent by virtue of just being one hell of an idiot. And let me tell you, John Wayne, let me tell you one thing. I don't like any of your movies. Next up is Brian Assman. He's more of a boob guy, but his name's Brian Assman. Wait, who? Max Booth? Uh, Which one, the first or the second? Oh, the third. Good. Fuck that fucking marshmallow prick. How'd he die? (laughs) Wait, 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 let me guess. He got his head stuck up his own ass and then had to eat his way out. (laughs) Kind of like seven, but lamer. (laughs) What a fucking dork. (laughs) Wait, wait. Uh, what? A poison egg? Like a deviled egg? Oh, hard-boiled. I mean, wait, how would you even do that? I mean, I guess you could take strychnine and then get yourself like a 10 mil syringe with a 26-gauge needle and just carefully inject it into the yolk. And then uh, and you could use like a little drop of white out to hide the hole, I guess, and put it back in the egg bowl he keeps on his desk. But, uh... He's always offering visitors eggs. So how would you make sure that Max ate the poison egg? Unless... Max wasn't the target! Surf's up, dude. San Diegan. Uh, Annunciation, quite unlike John Baltusberger's. Oh, hmm... Max wasn't the target. Max wasn't the target. You claim to know Max Booth 1 and Max Booth 2, but are utterly shocked when Max Booth 3 comes around. Brian, Brian, the jig is up. The jig is up. Take your surfboard and your Volkswagen Bug out of the goddamn taco shop and drive up to Texas and confess for your crimes, my friend. If you were trying to kill somebody close to Max, who would it be? Who would it be? You tell me, my friend. I don't like you, Brian. I don't like your name. I don't like your whole your whole whatever it is you got going on, Brian. You got a voice that sounds like a can of tuna. And I'm done. I'm done. Next up is the safest rider I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with, Danger Slater. Hey there, this is indie author Danger Slater. Uh, Giving my condolences, I guess, uh, as I've heard about the passing of Max Booth III. You know, me and Max maybe never agreed on much. We didn't have much in common. Uh, You know, dare I say, I didn't even really like him all that much. Uh, didn't share any of the same opinions, and I don't know, every time I saw him, I just wanted to break something, but 
I will say this. One time, or the single time I did meet him, he came up to me and he introduced himself and he shook my hand and I'll never forget his palms were just horribly sweaty. Like, it was like he just washed his hands. They were dripping with moist, warm water. And I'll be honest, I'll, I'll never forget that. So in that way, I guess Max's memory will live on. Um, and again, my condolences to his family. Danger, danger. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe, maybe Max's hands were sweaty because he was afraid of a man who calls himself Danger? It's not even your middle name. It's your first name. What's your middle name? Danger Innocence Slater? Because you don't sound innocent to me. You sound less than dangerous, but more than innocent if you catch my drift. I think, I think, here's what I think, my friend. I think you're projecting the wetness of Max's hand onto your own insecurities. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I think, danger. Innocence, Slater. More like danger, guilty, Slater. Frank Edler's next. Uh, Let me tell you about Frank Edler, guys. Likely a murderer. Maybe didn't kill Max. Maybe didn't kill Max. But I think he's from Joyzy. I think he's from Joyzy, and I think he's killed many people. I think he's killed many, many people. Uh, I could count them all on one hand if my hand was freakish and had seven fingers. Okay? I think he's killed many people. Maybe not Max. I wouldn't be surprised, though. He guessed it on a show, uh, he guessed it on episode 31, horror comedy. And let me tell you one thing. Murder is no laughing matter, Frank. It doesn't, uh, you don't wear it well. Bazong! Hey, this is Mr. Frank uh, from Bazong, uh, Frank Edler, writing horror comedy books. Uh, really, really sorry to hear about Max and your untimely demise. Uh, hell of a way to go there, Max. Uh, but at least posthumously, you've made it to the 100th episode of Ghoulish, which is uh, which is something to say, even though you can't say it because you're dead. Which I read, and that kind of sucks, right? To, to be dead for your 100th episode. Uh, so maybe I can help out here, remember you f- fondly, uh, yeah, fondly, uh, for, for doing this ghoulish thing. Um, unfortunately we won't make it to episode 101, uh, but I did want to say to you, Max up in heaven, that I thank you for having me on the show. I remember it as a great time talking about horror comedy. I remember, you know, we were talking about horror comedy movies, so you could relate to horror comedy, and then you didn't know what Saturday the 14th was. Like, how do you not know what Saturday the 14th is? Like the penultimate horror comedy movie. And yet, I, I out of the kindness of my heart, I lent you my Saturday the 14th VHS tape. You hadn't got that back to me. And now that you're dead, I don't know that I'm going to see it, Max. Uh, that's really disappointing. Like, what kind of asshole doesn't give you back uh, a cherished movie on VHS? I'm sure I'm sure you didn't, like, try to watch it on a on a... A DVD player and like have the tape eaten up or something stupid like what kind of asshole does what kind of asshole takes a Saturday the 14th VHS tape and doesn't give it back to a guy like it's kind of no wonder you're dead such a strange way to go a poisoned egg it's a really weird way to go Max it's kind of crappy that you went that way but you know if you were still alive I'd say it would suck if somebody killed you with a poisoned egg because you didn't you didn't give the copy back of my Saturday the 14th. That would suck if you were dead because of that reason. But I'm sure that's not why, you know, you're dead of a poison egg, uh, Max. So, yeah, anyway. Ooh, poison egg. Oh, that reminds me. I Max, I gotta go. Uh, thanks for the appearance on your show. Congratulations to your dead ass on 100 episodes. Uh, I, I gotta go collect some eggs out in the chicken house myself. I didn't realize in Jersey they allowed you to have your own chicken house, Frank. It's a hen house, by the way. Maybe a cat house. I hear you like to partake in those kind of uh, uh, activities, Frank. That's okay. Maybe you didn't murder Max. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you did. But there are bodies behind you, my friend, and we're out to expose them all. 
Zachary Ashford. Let's hear what this clown has to say. All right, um, yeah, Zach Ashford here. Um, heard today that Max Booth the third. I'm not sure I'm supposed to say that the third bit. Um, I guess you are. Maybe it's like some sort of, I don't know, American nobility or something. Some trailer park king or something. I don't know how the country works, man. I mean, you see it on the news, it's just a fucking mess, but. Apparently it does, you know, people come from there, it's a place that exists, it's not like Australia. Yeah, what do I know? Um, I'm here today, is uh, condolences to Max's family. I mean, all that should have been past tense, so it's really, um, despite his weird name, he was a good dude. Um, if it wasn't for Darkman Digest, I probably would never have gotten anything published, so I always hoped I could... Um, have a, you know, buy him a beer one day, just, you know, it's a pretty cool thing to do, I mean, I was really grateful for that, but, uh, obviously not going to happen now, I mean, you know, maybe I'll just toast one to him or something, you know, pour a bit on the floor doing the movies or something, but, you know, yeah, no, it sucks, I mean, he was just about to go big time with, with this movie, which is probably still going to come out, it's going to be awesome, it's a nice legacy to live, but, um, uh, looked up before, he's 2027, joined the 27 club, so this, this all sucks, man, it's, um, I mean, it's a pretty rock and roll thing to do, but, yeah, you know, why would we be better off, I mean, worse, why would be worse without him, he's, he's in a better place now, obviously, uh, somewhere, probably somewhere really warm when you think about it, uh, he had a look back on the way he died, realised it was just a passage to the next step, so, um, yeah, how did he die, an egg, yeah, he's in America, right, yeah, Texas, it's like, like, America on steroids, and they've got, like, guns, and COVID, and fucking Americans, and he died from eating an egg, I'm a pussy, condolences to Max Booth third. he's a good bloke, What's going to miss him, um, yeah, Donald says to, to his family, probably more than him, I mean, he has, he can't, he can't hear them, he's, well, wherever he is, um, but yeah, c- uh, condolences to Laurie and I guess Max Booth the fourth, I don't, I don't know how that works, but, um, yeah, sad day, and, um, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess, uh, she'll be right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't tell if it's the accent or if you're recording upside down or what, but do Australians all mumble like they're in the middle of a opium den? Couldn't even understand anything that you are saying about America. Didn't sound too bad coming out of a mouth like that, my friend. Wow. I'm not offended as an American. I'm offended that I have an earache after hearing that. Straining, turning up the volume so loud just to hear the incessant mumblings of a likely murderer. Zachary Ashford, I don't like you and I don't like Australia very much. So let's just get to uh, brass tacks here. Did you murder Max Booth or not? The mumbling murderer of Melbourne is what they call you. Let's get to a real American. Mr. Michael Allen Rose. Max Booth? (laughs) There's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Oh, Max and I used to bum around all right. Hanging around the American Southwest, driving our Cadillac through the desert, picking up girls and causing chaos. Only problem was Max had an addiction. Max couldn't stop eating those eggs. That boy would eat a dozen eggs at a time. Right there in the passenger seat next to me, as we were doing 65 down the highway, wind in our hair. Smell of eggs would follow him everywhere he went. I remember the first time I seen Max Booth throw up a dozen eggs at a time. 
me tell you what, there's some things you can never unsee. No matter how many times you bleach your eyes. Did I ever tell you about the time I bleached my eyes? It was also Max's idea. He said to me in that annoying voice he has, he said, Michael, you should bleach your eyes. I said, Max, won't that make me go blind? He didn't answer me. He just sat there eating them eggs, sitting at the other hotel bed, staring at me. He used to stare at me while I slept, too. I'd wake up in the morning. Max was still sitting on the other side of the room, just eating them eggs and staring at me. Did I like Max? No, of course not. Nobody really did. Did I respect Max? No, no, I can't say that I respect him either. But did I like Max? Yes, I did. I also respected him. That guy could publish a book like nobody's business. And it was nobody's business. Well, except his business. I suppose technically, it was all of our business. Only thing that wasn't the rest of our business... Them eggs he kept eating. God, that man smelled of eggs. Just sulfur farts following him around like a cloud. Horrifying. What happened to him? Huh. Yeah, he probably had it coming. Probably has to do with them eggs. Nobody likes the smell of sulfur farts in the morning. Of course, Max Booth did. Found that out one night as we were hanging out in Tempe, Arizona. Little desert hotel just on the outskirts. We had pulled in after a drug-fueled orgy of sex and violence that had the police stations from five different counties chasing us, cleared out, all the sirens blaring and all the cars right behind us. But Max didn't care. He threw an egg. Right at the sheriff's hat. Knocked the hat right off his head. I still have that hat. We went back the next day, picked it up off the road, out of that smoking crater that that egg left when it exploded. Why did eggs explode when Max was around? Who knows? Maybe that's why he ate so many eggs. Oh, Max Booth, you said? Yeah, I don't know him. But my friend Max Booth and I... Why, we used to eat a lot of eggs together. Round about the American Southwest. Driving our Chevrolet back and forth. Like two men pacing a rug. Till it's threadbare. And pointless. That's the Max Booth I know. And I'll always remember him that way. As the Eggman. Not liked. Not respected. But tolerated. I'm Michael Allen Rose. Well, sultry sounds of a real American talking really cured my hatred of the uh, down under, down under. Uh, Listen, listen, Michael Allen Rose, he is also a man obsessed with eggs. I know he wrote a book about an egg detective. And uh, I have to say uh, his his uh, pastoral uh, imagery of the uh, American Southwest uh, Really, really made me think that maybe he didn't kill Max. Um, he probably didn't. As a blue-blooded American citizen, proud to be here, land of the brave. I gotta say, Michael Allen Rose, I'm not pulling a finger at you quite yet, my friend. Not yet. I know you're obsessed with eggs, just as Max is, and I don't think you'd defile an egg so as to poison it or purposely make it rot. I think you respect eggs just as much as you tolerated Max. And I don't think you'd murder Max. You might murder somebody else, like maybe a John Baltusberger. But you definitely wouldn't murder Max. Uh, I'm going I'm to cross you off the list tentatively. Uh, who's next? Who sent me a eulogy? Oh, Haley Piper. Hmm. Wormy one, that one. Let's see. Max is was a wonderful person, a good friend, a great publisher. But I I think we all need to acknowledge that there was something going wrong here. There was this screenshot that he would post on Twitter sometimes, frequently in fact, 
um, about a couple and what they would do with eggs in the bedroom. And I can't help but feel that there's a connection between, I'm just going to say it, it was an obsession and what happened to Max. Um, maybe there's some kind of premonition at play where he kind of somehow knew what was going to happen to him. Or, I don't know, maybe he just wanted someone to put an egg in him. But is this is how it is now, and there's... Yeah, the, that kind of dream can come true, but what does it do to everyone you've you've left who's been... Now have to wonder who would poison an egg, and did they think that they were helping him, maybe? I'm sorry, I can't do this. Ah, the tweet in question. The, uh... The screenshot she, um pointed out. Let me read the text and let's see if there's any reason to murder a man. <sighs> Hubby like shoving boiled eggs up my vagina. I can hold three. And then I squat and lay the eggs like a hen. And Hubby will eat them, coated with my juices. Smiley face. Now, if a man posted that three times a day, I'd think nothing of it other than that's hilarious. Haley seems to be quite bothered by this. So bothered, in fact. She was driven to Moida? Murder? Possibly? Or maybe she just pushed him in front of a moving egg truck. Maybe she just allowed the, uh, the, the she just laid the groundwork for his death. Maybe she let eggs sit out for too long, Synonymax, knowing he has this unnatural obsession with sticking them up his ass. Listen, Haley, I think it's weird to be offended by that tweet. I think it's weird to be obsessed with it. And I don't think it's weird to suspect you of murdering my friend, Max Booth III. Whatever happened to the first two, Haley? Are they in your fridge? David Leo Rice. David Leo Rice, you're next. And I'm listening very intently, my friend. Let's hear ya. So I just heard the news. And yeah, I wanted to jump on here to offer my condolences to Max's friends and family. I guess, I mean, I assume he has friends. I don't, I don't know who they would be, but, uh, you know. On the off chance that he has any, I want to uh, offer my condolences to them. And, you know, it's just a lot to process that, I mean, poison egg, who kills someone with a poison egg? You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like poison as much as the next guy. And I guess like I have nothing against eggs per se, but I mean, to combine them together, and kill someone that way, it's, it's kind of brilliant, actually, if, if you really think about it. But at the same time, it's, yeah, it's hard to know what to say when these kind of things happen. It's like, you know, it's the type of thing that you just never expect. You never think that, you know, you're going to have this kind of presence in your life like Max, who sort of, you know, who taunts you and harms you and, and sort of, you know, who owes you money. Anyway, that, that's not important. But but what I mean is, you know, you never think that people are going to be taken from you like this, you know, that that your problems are going to just be resolved with a single poison egg. It's like it just never crosses your mind that that life might take that turn, but, but it can obviously. And that, that's why we're here. So, you know, I don't want to ramble too much. I know this is a solemn occasion and I just wanted to, to celebrate the fact, I mean, sorry, to, um, to mourn the fact that, uh, that Max is no longer with us. And I know that we're going to miss him a lot and that we're going to have just a lot of freed up mental space now that we're not involved in, uh, you know, in these long feuds with him. And anyway, whoever did this, I hope, I hope you're proud of what you've done and uh, that you've learned something from it. I think at, at this moment, that's all I can say. And, you know, I, I don't want to say anymore and, and give away too much or, or uh, put my foot in my mouth. So I'll, I'll just sign off and I'll say, you know, Max, we're, we're uh, glad to be ready. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're going to miss you a lot and uh, it's been great. And yeah, whoever did this, I, uh, you know, you, you know who you are, and uh, I can only assume that you're celebrating in a uh, 
in, in as due a manner as possible. And I wish you all the best for everyone. And, you know, just wanted to send my sincere condolences in this way. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from the rest of you and we'll get through this together. Hmm. Hmm. How far have we come? Oh, hey, murderer. Murderer, I hope you've learned from this lesson to become a, a greater person after you've murdered Max. You don't want to put a foot in your mouth, David. You don't want to put a foot. In, whose foot do you want to put in your mouth? The cadaver's foot of my dear friend Max Booth's? Listen, David, this, uh, this murderer needs to be put away. This, need, this murderer needs to be put away in a cage and beaten with a stick. Because this is sick stuff. This is sick stuff. I want to hear the whimperings of our murderer. I don't want to hear, and I don't want to read his memoir about how he became a, a fuller person after watching the life leave my friend Max Booth's eyes. <sighs> David Leo Rice, you were the most recent guest who actually sent in a eulogy since uh, Jeff Vandermeer and Chuck Tingle ignored my emails. They're not free of, of suspicion, by the way. Jeff, Chuck, Mr. Tingle. But David Leo Rice, I'm disgusted by your, your sense of rehabilitative justice that some murderer can write a poem and be absolved of his sins. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Get out of my face. Get out of my face, David Leo Rice. Get out. Next is Armand Rosamelia. Hey, Armand Rosamelia here. You might know me from the episode I did on um, the podcast, pretty much just about my Funko Pop collection. And I just got the word through my uh, exclusive Funko Pop newsletters and also from my exclusive Funko Pop app that uh, Max Booth III is uh, not with us anymore. It is with heavy heart that I that I say this and then I, uh, you know, just, I'm just, I'm getting... I'm getting choked up. He was like a brother to me that I never wanted. He was he was that guy that, um, you know, he was always around and he always did things. And uh, the guy wrote books and he wrote blog posts and he did, I think he did a movie uh, once. And he did like a bunch of other random things that were all really not newsworthy. If they were newsworthy, they would be in my exclusive Funko Pop newsletters. I, I, I didn't see his name in any of those, so I'm going to guess that he really had nothing to do with anything. Um, I do want to express the fact that uh, there's a couple of my Funko Pops missing from my collection. I, I count them each and every night before I go to bed, and uh, I know he, he was kind of excited about a couple of them. He got a little worked up over my, my Britney Spears collection and, um, you know, hopefully someone will find them. But, you know, I mean, I guess more importantly, I guess, is that, uh, you know, Max is gone. So I'm, I'm hoping somebody else takes over the podcast, maybe with a little bit more enthusiasm, maybe with a little bit more, I don't know, research and structure and, I don't know, better guests and, I don't know, better sound quality, um, on better platforms, Maybe make them a little shorter. You tended to whine a lot, um, but anyway, this is a, this is a, it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy and emotional day for me. I'm just gonna go cry, and uh, I'm gonna go cry with my Funko Pop collection. So uh, that's it. That's 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 the end of this. Yeah, you're gonna get a twofer, dear audience. Uh, Armin Rosamilia and Jay Wilburn. They recently wrote a book together. Which makes me think they may have tag-teamed the death of my dear friend Max Booth III. Ah, uh, Jay Wilburn, he's next. And I'll, I'll reserve comment on Armin's disgusting obsession with Funko Pops. Uh, until after we hear Jay. My name is Jay Wilburn. I've been in my house since February of 2020, in case you were wondering. You can check the tracker on my ankle monitor if you don't believe me. First off, I don't even like eggs. I don't have anything against them or the late Max Booth III. They just aren't to my taste. Both of them are a little gross sometimes and they can smell. Both are unfinished and misbegotten. Both of them just kind of fall flat if there isn't other better stuff around them to support them. 
but I don't hate eggs, that's what I'm saying. I'm here to talk about Max and all he meant to me in the writing industry. My most vivid memory of Worldcon 71 was seeing him naked, so vivid it haunts me. My most vivid memory of World Horror New Orleans was Max coming back out of the night with bloody knuckles and no memory of what crimes he might have committed. I think back fondly on all the stories he rejected and all the times he stood me up for podcast interviews because he had no system in place for remembering days, times, or showing the slightest concern for other people, really. <clears throat> he was a son, a brother, a burden, a night auditor, a writer, a publisher, a screenwriter, a shitty claymation animator, and held the world record for the most times being screwed over by publishers who seemed to be really good deals at the time. But of course, the thing he will be most remembered for is creating pizza horror and the need for publishers to put no pizza horror in their submission guidelines along with no abusing animals and no rape scenes. I can't believe someone poisoned him to death. I don't mean I'm surprised someone would want to, I just listed off a number of reasons anyone would want to. I just mean I can't believe he lived this long. The fact that he didn't die during his crazy childhood or that hotel job didn't kill him is baffling. He lived like he was trying to die horribly and take everyone else with him. If anyone should have wanted to kill him, Lori had the most reasons, but she's too nice for that. She'll be fine, though. She could throw a shitty pizza horror anthology out a window and hit someone better than Max, even in Texas. I could see her turning a blind eye to someone bringing in poisoned eggs, though. Just saying. So it wasn't me. And uh, rest in peace or whatever, I guess. Well, Jay, obsessive little nerd, I, I see, doesn't like eggs. He doesn't like eggs much. Doesn't like eggs much. Uh, seems to be obsessed with the pizza anthology that uh, Max put out. Uh, you know, I take some offense to uh, somewhat of the mean things Jay says. I was in that. And I ba weirdly, I, I based my obsessive little weirdo character on this next podcast guest. Tony McMillan, who's also a pizza horror author. Is he? Was he? Was he? I don't know. I never read the book. Uh, this is Tony McMillan. I uh, heard the news about Max. That he's dead. And I was like, okay, that's, that, you know, what else is happening in the world? But then... After I, I went online and didn't see enough Facebook likes for my last uh, joke, I kind of thought a little bit more about Max and what he meant to me as a, a means of promotion and advertising for his 10 to 12 listeners. And maybe, you know, one or two of them are employed and might actually buy a book but that, you know that that's a huge revenue stream for me so uh i was i was devastated i was devastated to hear what happened to max um you know we uh talked about fatherhood a lot and uh we we covered the ins and outs of uh what what not to do with the child i think fairly thoroughly I, especially uh, max he was really um is really imaginative about um, the ways a kid could be raised the wrong way. And, uh, you know, he was pretty method about it. And I learned a lot from that. And I want him to know wherever he is uh, now, which is probably nowhere. But even so, I hope he in nowhere he knows that Chad, his, uh, his one begotten son, will be taken care of by the state, most likely, or Max Landis's estate. Um, we had a lot of uh, fond memories about Max Landis and his uh, incredible career and his uh, impeccable person and his uh, his campaigning for the rights of women and the equality of, uh, of all genders. And, and um, you know, Max Landis is really the Max I'm going to miss the most, probably. But luckily, that guy's still alive because, you know, what they say, good always die young. But the really, really good guys make it to at least 40. Um, Max Booth, 
You know, he was, uh, I think he wrote books too. Or I, I honestly don't know. I just know him as um, as a source for me to try to uh, hawk my wares to the uninterested and slash unemployed. And for that, I'll never forget him and or his or his son chad so um max if you're out there what you aren't um you know uh take take her sleazy i think we said that a lot to each other almost any time we had a chance take take her sleazy just like that so i hope you're taking her sleazy for all of us sinners out there um but you know, real quick, you know, I'll I'll say this too. One one thing I am comforted by is the fact that he is Max Booth the third, and so we didn't we know there's going to be a sequel. There's going to be a fourth, right? So I mean, big whoop. Rocky three wasn't the best, but Rocky four came and rocked the shit, right? So Max Booth four, it'll probably be better than Max Booth three, I and mean, it's got to be. And you know, it, maybe Max Booth, you know, part four slash the final chapter. And then they'll fuck up and then they'll do like, you know, a new beginning and it'll be really bad, but then he'll come back with Max lives and Max lives will be phenomenal. And then the series will kind of Peter out after that, but I'm here for Max lives, dude. So, okay. That's all I got to say. I I miss you, Max. Love. Bye-bye. Tony, Tony, you use Max as a meal ticket your entire life and you have the audacity to, uh, to call his audience unemployed losers. Interesting. Well, you could take that meal ticket straight to Jack in the Box, my friend, because they sell 99 cent tacos. That's probably all you can afford because royalties on your books were nothing. Let me tell you, Max Booth never said, take her sleazy. He always said, live and breezy to me, because that's the way he lived. He lived breezily, easily through life. And you know what? We might get a Max Booth for. We might get a Max Booth 4. I've been looking up some stuff, guys, and I think I can get a Max Booth 4 in here. And Max Booth 4 is going to take no fucking prisoners, all right? Tony McMillan. Tony Meal Ticket McMillan. Hmm. Murderer. Jonathan Rabb, folks. He's next. Hi, everybody. I'm former esteemed guest of the Ghoulish podcast, Jonathan Rabb, and I'm here to pay my condolences uh, to the audience uh, for the passing of Max Booth III, whose cause of death was egg. Egg? I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what that means. I, I guess I would encourage you uh, among the living to uh, cook your food thoroughly. And uh, to cut it up into small pieces. Um, fun fact, I, I almost choked to death on a piece of roast a couple years ago. Um, so I, I, I spent about um, 10 minutes in the men's room, like, trying to make myself vomit. I was just, like, spitting up and, like, um, groaning uh, for a while in the stall. Uh, probably freaked some people out. Anyway, it didn't work. It didn't, didn't dislodge the piece of roast. Um, but when I, I left the men's room... Uh, uh, a mariachi band had started playing directly outside the door and I had to like, like push by them as they were playing. And I was like covered in sweat and I was very pale, more pale than usual. Um, and I had just given a, a speech at that event that night. So like everybody knew who I was. Um, so that was horrible and embarrassing. And I'm, I, I wish I was making that story up, but I'm not anyway. Uh, eventually we figured out if you drink Coca-Cola, uh, or like a carbonated beverage or something, it'll like dislodge the the obstruction. Uh, so I I would recommend that to you if if you find yourself choking on something on egg or or whatever. Uh, I just I only wish I had reached Max in time uh, with this life saving information. Assuming that's what happened to him, I don't quite understand the whole metaphysics of death by egg. If somebody could uh, explain that to me. Uh, so so since I'm here, if if any of Max's filmmaker friends are listening i've got a couple i've got a couple pitches here if i can just find my notes um okay i got two ideas um the first one first one i just want you to think about this zombie ufo zombie ufo okay so i'm thinking john keel by way of lucio fulci all right so i don't leave my house much but i would i would leave i would go to the movie theater if that was on the poster I'm sure we could like work out something with the estates uh, or something. Uh, zombie UFO, right? I think it kind of, the screenplay sort of writes itself. 
Um, okay, I also got, I don't have a, so I don't have a title for this one yet, but I, I kind of got the pitch down. So let me just give you the setup. Uh, H.P. Lovecraft meets Thomas Ligotti, all right, in the time-traveling road trip buddy stoner comedy event of the summer, okay? I think we get these two guys on screen. Um, we toss in some good, like, SEO keywords, like Cthulhu and Bong or whatever, we get, we get Cthulhu to smoke weed, all right? We get the puppets to smoke weed. We can use CGI to get these guys together. Um, and, you know, we can film in, in Ligotti's living room if he, doesn't, if he doesn't want to leave. Whatever he prefers, okay? I just, I think we've got a hit on our hands. Howard and Tom go to college type of thing. That's kind of a sideways Ghoulies, Ghoulies reference. There's like four or five of you uh, out there who probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, ghoulies, ghoulies go to college. Uh, that, that's all I, that's all I got for pitches for now. I don't, I don't have a script or anything, uh, but I work pretty cheap because, uh, the price of CBD chocolate in Colorado keeps going up. Uh, so if you guys want to, want to reach out to me, I, I'm on Twitter. I've, there's like 200, 150 people who are real people who follow me. Uh, and I only use that p- platform to complain about dark souls. Uh, so I, I think I know what I'm talking about here. I've got, got my ear to the pulse uh, of what the people want. So anyway, you can, you can hit me up. I'm not, I'm not real busy. I just, I don't sleep much. Uh, and anyway, uh, Max, if you're out there, if your spirit can hear the sound of my voice from beyond the grave, I just want to say that I'm, I am sure that you are in hell. Uh, we talked about your behavior and you told me to mind my own damn business. And then, and then an egg killed you. So I guess we all learned something uh, from this, except for you, because you're dead. Um, but in all seriousness, Max, um, I, I do want to say I admire and 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 cheer for your success, uh, continued success as a writer, as a podcaster, as a comedian, as a patron of the arts, and now as a filmmaker. I can't wait to see your first movie, hopefully later this year. Uh, I just want to say congratulations on 100 episodes of Ghoulish, and here's to a few hundred more. Thanks. I want to do a little psychological commentary on Mr. Jonathan Rabb here. He speaks as if Max is listening to him. He speaks as if Max is still alive, knowing full well Max died of an egg-related injury. He does, he claims not to understand the metaphysics of egg death. Yet, he can't accept that maybe his own hands had killed Max. So he speaks to Max like some kind of psycho weirdo living in his mom's basement obsessively as if he's alive. And then has the audacity to try to ride a dead man's coattails all the way to the box office. Let me tell you, zombie UFO, never going to happen, punk. H.P. Lovecraft weed comedy, sorry, it's been done. Nobody liked it. And nobody likes you either, my friend. I think you murdered Max. I think you can't accept it. And that's why you talk to him and you say congratulations to him as if he's alive. He can't hear you. Dead men's ears don't hear, my friend. Maybe make that your movie title. It's a great Western. Dead men's ears don't hear, said the hangman. Next. Who's next? Who's next? Brianna Morgan. Interesting. Very interesting, my friends. I have a suspicion this one's the one. I gotta say, I was so sorry to hear about Max's passing and about the way he went, especially. I can't imagine that dying by poison is a great way to go. Uh, Of course, there's the whole matter of who did it. And I I mean, I have ideas, but oh, I, I never would have done anything like that. Poison, I wouldn't have. Max, Max wasn't really a dick per se. He just wasn't my favorite person. But does that mean that I think he deserved to die? No. I mean, just because someone's an asshole and they take all your money and promise you're going to get twice your investment back and then they just fuck off to some island doesn't mean... Anyway, all I'm saying is I could see why somebody did it and even though... 
I have my ideas as to who it could be. I'm not going to name anyone here because that's that's kind of tacky and I still need to, you know, network with people and get along with people in the horror community. So I'm definitely not going to point any fingers, but all I can say for sure is that it was not me. And, um, I mean, yeah, it is, it is sad. It is sad that he's gone. I've had 18 cups of coffee, friends. I've had 18 cups of coffee, and I am not happy at all. Brianna Morgan doesn't want to point fingers, wants to build bridges in the horror community. Well, I'm here burning them all, baby. Burn them all. You're all guilty. Y'all had a part in killing Max. Let me tell you why. He'd call me up and say, these authors, they don't give me any respect. I publish their words. I publish their words and give them to the world. And all they do is complain, is complain that I went off to some island. There aren't any islands in Central Texas. It's landlocked, you morons. Brianna Morgan, I think I know who killed Max. And it, re- and it rhymes with Triannish Morgan. You, Brianna. Brianna. Whatever you like to call yourself, you tell it to the judge. Spell it out for the stenographer, because that's where you're headed. Straight to prison. Lisa Quigley. She's in a eulogy, too. Maybe she killed Max. But I want to I wanna bring up an interesting, an interesting theory here, folks. Maybe y'all killed Max. Maybe we'll never know who killed Max. Maybe y'all did. And I'm here burning everything down to find out who is most directly responsible? Lisa Quigley. Possibly. For the purposes of this recording, my name is Lisa Quigley. I am the co host of the Ladies of the Fright podcast. I am the author of the novella Hell's Bells, the forthcoming novella Camp Neverland, and the forthcoming well, I think it's forthcoming still, um, the forthcoming novel, The Forest, which is supposed to be released by Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, but now that Max has been murdered, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but I have a contract, so it doesn't say anything about Max Booth needing to be alive. Thank the gods. Okay, I'm getting a little bit off track. Uh, For the purposes of this recording, I just wanted to state who I am. Uh, The authorities have asked that I provide some kind of statement. I I don't know, to prove I didn't quote-unquote serve Max a poisoned egg. I'm flattered, Lisa. You think I'm an authority? Possibly my mustache and possibly because I eat beef jerky when I talk to you. Let me tell you, though. Let me just tell you something. I'm not a cop. Even though I pretend to be one on the freeways at night, pulling people over, handcuffing them, stealing their wallets. I'm not a cop. No, no, no. I just have sirens and I have a, I have a loudspeaker and uh, I like to, you know, beat people up every now and then. I'm so glad that I was able to trick you into a uh, confession, sounds like, because of my mustache. Doesn't take much, huh? Doesn't take much. Running scared, running scared. Oh, you don't want your book to be, you want your book to be published even though Max is dead. Guess what? More than one person runs poop, publishing. That's Max and Lori. And after hearing this, I'm sure Lori is going to say, no way. Nuh-uh. Not publishing a murderer who can be fooled by some fatso with a mustache just because he loves Paw Patrol. Thinks he's a cop. What kind of dodo is that? Let's, let's hear some more of this Lisa stuff. I mean, okay. Max is a nice enough guy. Um... He has never been directly rude to me. He's always invited me on to his... I've been on his podcast, Ghoulish, to talk about my novella, Hell's Bells, and we talked about the devil. Um, I've been on his other podcast with Lori Michelle, uh, Castle Rock Radio, to talk about Pet Cemetery. He did talk an awful lot about sponge gloves in that conversation, and... um, That was interesting. Uh, But, you know, I don't really have a problem with Max at all. Max Booth III has been wonderful to me. He read my novel, The Forest, and um, he agreed to publish it. And um, 
yeah, it, it, he's done some pretty cool things for me. So what am I going to say? But I, listen, I didn't, well, for legal purposes, I have to say that I didn't kill Max. I didn't though. I, I didn't kill Max. I don't have any eggs. Well, I do have eggs. I have eggs in my fridge that are not a full, complete carton. But I had eggs for lunch, so what do you want from me? They're, it's not going to be full. I don't um, even have... Okay, well, I, I have poison, but it's not for people, usually. Um... Max is publishing my book, but I did read the contract to make sure that <laughs> it doesn't say anything about, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't say anything about Max needing to be alive, so this doesn't impact me professionally or personally that he's dead. I mean, I'm very sad that he's dead. Um, I wish I wish he wasn't, uh, but, you know, he is, so what are what are we... What are we going to do, you know? Let, let me tell you. So, this is something I haven't told anyone. Um, but Max Booth III, see, I was planning on going to KillerCon in Texas. And I put out a post on my social media saying, you know, is anybody... Does anyone ha in Texas have a place where I can crash? I'm a little short on funds, and I'd really like to go to KillerCon. So Max reached out and said that there was a couch I could crash on at his and Lori Michelle's house um, and her home, and that I was welcome to stay if I wanted. So I said, okay. And I said, that's great. So I I booked a plane ticket. I planned the trip. I tell everyone I'm going to go to KillerCon. And about two hours before I was going to get on this plane, I get this text from Max that says, listen, I'm sorry to tell you this, but the couch is actually off the table right now. Not that the couch was on the table, but I was no longer welcome to stay on the couch at his house. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm already at the airport. I, my bag's already packed. This is, you know, I've already planned this whole trip. And now you're telling me before, you know, as I'm about to leave that I have nowhere to stay and you know, Max kind of like danced around it for a while. And finally, I, I just said, Max, what's going on? Like, why, why can't I stay at your house? So finally, he tells me what's up. And he says, listen, you've been on my podcast, both of my podcasts. You've been on um, Ghoulish. You've been on Castle Rock Radio. And... It's come to my attention that you've also been on This Is Horror podcast. And the conflict of interest was just too great. Um, he said that he was under the impression that the only podcast I was ever going to go on besides my own would be his. I said, I don't really know where you got that idea because I never promised I wouldn't go on any other podcast but uh, some reason he had a problem with it and so I had to make other arrangements um it was this whole deep inconvenience I had to spend money I didn't have on a hotel funnily enough it was the hotel that Max used to work at so that was a whole awkward thing um but you know would I kill the guy over it? I mean, would I? Would you? So, I mean, 
something to think about. But at any rate, um, this is my statement. I, I hope they get to the bottom of it one day. Um, so goodbye, Max Booth the third. It was nice knowing you. I, I do need to know if I can have someone from PMMP reach out to me to make sure that my contract is still valid because I do still want to have The Forest be published um, and, uh, despite Max's uh, untimely demise. So if your people could connect with my people, that would would be great. All right, uh, take care. Bye-bye. Guilty. Friar. Guilty as all hell. Let me tell you one thing, guys. Who goes to KillerCon? What kind of people go to KillerCon? Let me tell you. Killers and the killed. She went to KillerCon intending to kill Max Booth and brought up this whole story about how she can't sleep on the couch anymore. I can tell you one thing, folks. Max would never pull a couch out from under people. If he offered that couch, that couch was still around. She was plotting murder. She's a killer, going to meet other killers at KillerCon and find marks. And Max, sweet, lovable boy that he is, is a perfect mark to be killed. Lisa Quigley, the egg murderer, she killed our sweet boy. And let me tell you, get your people with our people? Let me tell you, you killed half their people. Okay? Publishing. Is going to have to get back to you on that little book of yours. You might have to send it to some other rinky-dink horror publisher of whom I will not name because I don't want them to cry about it and tweet for days. Next, uh, we got a whole episode of This Is Horror with uh, M- Michael David Wilson and Bob Pastorella. Get ready to snooze, folks. I'm Michael David Wilson, the host of This Is Horror Podcast, and I'm joined by my co-host, Bob Pastorella. Hello, everybody. Well, I hope that I'd never have to do this, and it's a really shitty situation, but unfortunately, you know, we've heard the news that our friend and publisher and editor... Max Booth Third has passed away. Mm-hmm. I it, it's difficult um, to know what to say. Uh, we we haven't quite got all the details through yet, so I don't want to speculate as to what happened. But I did want to take this moment to just pay tribute. To Max, I mean, not only did he put out a great podcast in the form of Ghoulish, which, of course, has been nominated for a This Is Horror Award, but he put out my own novella, The Girl in the Video. He put out Bob's novella, Mojo Rising. He... <sighs> this is difficult, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he... He... <sighs> He edited their watching. He, mm-hmm. He's just a good guy and he's fucking gone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know where you're coming from. I, when I first got those edits back from, from their watching, you know, and I know we were kind of annoyed with him because he went through the entire manuscript and he changed the spelling of Brian to a why yeah to yeah. try to be funny yeah it was a dickhead man. and it was annoying it was a lot yeah. of work but when we were i was fucking furious with him rightly so because after the first page it was okay but you know when you get down to page you know 300 and it's the main character and you have to go back in and change it you know and but now i'm, I'm sad because i was mad i'm sad because i was mad yeah yeah, I mean, we we did waste a lot of money employing him to do that, but I'm 
I'm going to miss the dick jokes that we made together. Mm. He, he knew how to make a penis-centric joke. And so, you, mm-hmm. you know, you can slag him off for a shitty editing, for some of the, like, meaningless time-wasting things he did, like changing the spelling of Brian to an incorrect spelling of Brian, to him mm-hmm. taking the piss out of the British and British spellings. But that guy, he could handle a cock joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, there was really no one like him. You know, like the, he was, he, he, he has this persona where, you know, he, nothing could touch him, but he was, <clears throat> he was so nervous the first time we had him on the podcast that, that he, he had, he had drank, you know, alcohol and it caused him to pee and he had to pee and he didn't want to, to ruin anything. And he, he peed while we were recording and yeah. muted his mic and I was the very dedication. Upset. Yeah. I, I was upset by that, you know, who does that? Yeah. Who, he, I, I was, I was fucking upset when we started. Now I'm feeling a bit angry because in him taking his piss and, and, and spraying it, there's a lot of it while on the air. That was like pissing on this is horror. If you piss on this is horror, you piss on me. And I ain't into water sports. So, think about that. Well, I mean, I, I don't Are you like into you water sports? Me. No, I'm definitely so, not exactly. into water sports. But I don't think he was, he was pissing on me. He was me. He was pissing because he was, you know, had he was inebriated and he was... I guess embarrassed. Do you think? Do you think being drunk is an excuse for pissing on the both of us? No, he didn't. He didn't piss on me. I mean, he might have pissed on you. He metaphorically he, pissed on you. Well, I mean, I. Don't... He stretched his piss from wherever the fuck he lives in Texas to. Where you live, I was going to say the address, but maybe we don't want that on on the podcast. No, I don't need to have my address <laughs> on there on the podcast. I don't, I I don't mean, think he, he stretched his, his, his piss that far, though. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's quite a stretch. Yeah, I mean, it was taking the piss, literally mm-hmm. and metaphorically. Yeah. But... I mean, okay, so there there were some good things about him. I mean, you know, he got his book, We Need to Do Something, made into a film. Mm -hmm. Um, Although, bathroom book, setting a book in a bathroom was a bit immature, Mm -hmm. a bit weird. So, I mean, grow up. Well, you sat it in he a bathroom. The film. The, 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 I'm sure you heard he, he stole a, a part of the set. Criminal. Yeah. It's like when no one was looking, he took a piece of that bathroom set. Did that really happen? Yeah, he really did. Are we allowed to say that? I mean, I guess he's dead now, so it doesn't fucking matter, does it? I mean, he posted it on, posted it on social media. Do you think that got him killed? I don't know. If he took some of your bathroom, would you kill him? Well, I mean, if he took some of... See, my bathroom's not a set, though. So if he took some of my bathroom, then he would probably end up getting killed because he would take the wall, and then, you know, the wall would not be very secure. And... I mean, that could be how he died, but, I mean, the wall at that point would have had to have a knife and stabbed him over 50 times. So, I don't know. Hmm. It's quite specific how you know how many times it would take to stab well, Max mean, for him to die. A number, just using a, a number, you know, a, a number that came off, you know, the top of my head. Now, I don't know if it was 47 times or, hmm. or 40, 47 times. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
It, it felt like 50. I mean, uh, it, it, probably to the person who was doing it, mm. it may have felt like 50. Yeah. You know, even when you were counting, you know, the 45, 46, 47, you know, it, it, it could have felt like a thousand. Mm. Well, but uh, you probably felt good. Yeah. What what else is there to say about Max in this eulogy? Something nice. I mean, he was married to Laurie. Mm-hmm. She's nice. Yeah. Laurie is good person. Laurie is super cool. She's she's super cool. Yeah, only professional part of PMMP, but and, uh, yeah. what else can we say? I'm I'm kind of glad that we're doing this eulogy because, as you heard at the start, I was nearly crying, but now I feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Max is dead. What's that then? Yeah. Should we just go record another yeah. podcast? We got, you know. Yes, Ma Max is dead, so Ghoulish is no more. Listen mm -hmm. to this as horror podcast. Way better. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's a good way to, to look at it. He's, yeah. You know, you know, he's he's gone. Ghoulish is gone. So now, you know, all you have left is you got this is horror. You got Inkeist. Well. So you who, know, but who, who who gives a fuck, fuck about Inkeist? Well, I mean, not no. Max. He didn't give a fuck about them. It's like. <laughs> no. They had a public rivalry. But, no. I thought that was funny, though, when they said goulash. <laughs> that well, was pretty fucking it funny. It's inappropriate. I think oh, Shane I'm was sorry. drunk. Anyway, you know, goulash is gone. Ink heist is redundant. Listen to this as horror. Max is dead. And have a great, great day. Well, just like a limey Brit to uh, hijack an entire podcast with an episode of their own podcast, with a Benedict Arnold at his side, Bob Pastorella, I'm talking to you, uh, this, uh, this uh, inter-Atlantic uh, friendship bothers me. I've already made fun of accents enough, though. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to be poisoned next by one of you bastards. But I'll just say this, and it won't take me ten minutes, by the way. Michael David Wilson, Bob Pastorella, this is horror. You are guilty. Fucking guilty. After all Max has done for you. After all Max has done for you to put you on the... This is horror awards wouldn't be anything without Max being nominated. Without Max being a guest on your show. You know, the first time I heard This Is Horror was when Max was on your show. And you know what? I never listened again. Never again. Yeah, I throw a dollar to you every month. But you can't hijack Max's podcast. Not on his death day. Goodbye. Guilty. Lori's next. Well, you want to hear a grieving widow? You sickos? In love with yourselves? You want to hear more pain, more suffering? Oh, yeah, you'll use it in your next book that nobody will read because Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing doesn't exist anymore effectively. Effectively. Can Lori get through her tears to edit your stupid words? Probably not. Is it worth her time? Probably not. Get out of here, you fucking parasites. All right, Lori. Please, let's hear ya. Hey, what are you all doing here? I thought I was coming to sign the inheritance papers. Not yet? Okay. Yeah, I know I'm the logical choice for murderer. I mean, I did have to live with a guy. He was constantly yapping about books, editing, formatting, slash, podcasting, podcast, 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 and this movie he'd made, movies all the time. But the most irritating thing he constantly talked about was that he could hold three. He used to t talk about it with everything. I can hold three. I can hold three. But it always bit back to the original tweet and the eggs. I told him one day to prove it. I didn't know he'd actually try. 
Yeah, I know we have eggs for breakfast almost every morning. Yeah, I know I could easily have slipped something into them. But my dog eats those eggs too. You think I want to hurt that sweet dog? So what if I had to take the dog to the vet three times here lately because he isn't well? I'm sure that had nothing to do with the eggs. I know a few of you have a vendetta against Max. I mean, he did have me for his wife. I know that's enough to make a bunch of you jealous. And controversy didn't bother Max. He always spoke his mind. And if he didn't tell you right then, you better believe I knew exactly how he felt about all of you. The word inferior floated around our house a lot. But honestly, I didn't pay attention to him most of the time. So that might have just been about our internet connection. A lot of you had a reason to want to kill Max. But I swear it wasn't me. I'm just here to collect the inheritance that he left. That's all I'm here for now. I miss him. What? What do you mean there's no inheritance? I mean, I knew he got rid of the life insurance when he quit the hotel, but really? What good is he dead now? Well, Lori, I must say, suspicion casts its suspicious eyes in a suspicious manner at you. Suspiciously. I think maybe you might have something to do with this. Oh, your dog's sick because some eggs you, you prepared? Interesting. Obsession with an inheritance? Ha! There is no inheritance. There is no inheritance. He left it to nobody because there was nothing. I guess we'll never know who killed Max because all of you parasites sucked all the life out of him. He may have even offed himself. Who knows? I'm disgusted with all of you. Every single one of you. You hacks. You disgusting hacks. Well, I got news for you, nerds. Late last night, I went down to the body farm. And I grabbed Max's body. Put it in my Honda Fit. And drove home. Hoping to cast some kind of spell or ritual to reanimate my dear friend Max Booth so he could see what trash he associated with in his life. I spent hours looking up spells and rituals on the internet. Couldn't find how to reanimate a human being. But I did find on wikihow.com how to revive a goldfish. And I think the same concepts can apply here. He's got a goldfish-like body, if you think about it. Very small legs, very large feet, fin-like, and his hands constantly flapped around like he was swimming. It was very hard for him to breathe, considering he had asthma, probably because he was out of water for so long. So here it is, wikihow.com, how to revive a goldfish. On occasion, a goldfish might jump out of its tank and end up out of water, metaphorically speaking, of course. This could be due to water that is too warm for the goldfish at a temperature higher than 75 degrees Fahrenheit for all you British people out there. Uh, Fahrenheit's very different from Celsius. Or a goldfish that's infected with a parasite who is swimming too fast and ends up leaping out of his tank. Metaphorically, this goldfish, Max, has a lot of parasites. If you find your goldfish lying on the floor gasping for air, there he is, lying on the floor, not yet gasping for air, uh, you will need to take steps to revive him so he can live a long, happy life. Cleaning the fish. Examine the goldfish for signs of life. Hmm. Flabby, sweaty. Seems, it seems like he can be revived. Before you attempt to revive your goldfish, you should check for signs that he is still alive and can be saved. Signs your goldfish is dead include he appears dried out and skin is cracked. Not yet dried out, skin not cracked. But bruised his eyes are concave bulging inward instead of convex bulging outward now his eyes are bulging nearly out of his head he is missing body parts like fin or tail he doesn't have a fin or tail so of course they're missing if your goldfish displays any of these symptoms you may need to euthanize your fish don't say it i'm not gonna euthanize my friend my fish max we're using a humane treatment like clove oil However, if a fish looks dried out, but he does not have any missing body parts or concave eyes, you may still be able to revive him. Looking good, Maxi boy, looking good. Place the goldfish in a container filled with cool water from his tank. 
The cool water contains oxygen and will help you revive your fish. Some experts also suggest placing your goldfish right back into the water in his tank, even if he appears dried out. Here we go, Max. Gonna. Uh, he's looking, looking wet. He's looking pretty good. Clean any dirt or debris off the fish. Hold the fish in your hand. Got you in my arms, baby boy. All that dirt's gone. Cleaned up all the cum, too. And use your free hand to gently remove any dirt on the sides of the fish. Just poo-poo. Just cum-cum. Just some pee-pee. Not a whole lot of dirt. You can also simply move the fish around very slowly in the water to remove any debris. Debris. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Use your fingers to open the fish's gills. I'm going to have to guess here. Maybe the, the, the urethra, the penis hole. Here we go. This requires a steady and patient hand. Got nothing but patience. I'm steady as a weasel. You'll need to open the gill coverings on either side of the fish to check that his gills appear red, which is a good sign. He's not circumcised, so I'm going to guess I have to do is peel the skin off of his mushroom head. Redness all around. You can also try giving your fish's underbelly a massage to simulate airflow. Just like old times, baby. Just like old times, Max. Here we go. Here we go. Giving the fish... <coughs> I hear something. Giving the fish oxygenated water. Move the goldfish close to an air bubbler or an air stone. I'm blowing. I'm blowing. Most aquariums have an air stone. Which helps to regulate the water temperature in the tank and to aerate the water. If you have an air stone or as an or an air bubbler, use your hand to move your goldfish close to the air source. To my mouth, baby. <laughs> this will help give your fish more oxygen and hopefully revive your fish. If you do not have access to an air stone, you can continue to massage the fish's under. I wish you had said that first. You can continue to massage the fish's underbelly in the tank water until he starts to revive, or go purchase an air stone for the fish. Not leaving for an air stone. I'm just going to massage that belly, baby. <laughs> Use an air pipe. Here we go. Sticking it right in your mouth, baby. <laughs> Place the dechlorinated water in the container. Dechlorinated water does not contain chlorine or chloramine. It will prevent the buildup of ammonia in your fish. This doesn't apply at all. So reviving my friend Max. Let's skip to the next step. Put your fish in a container. You'll need to connect the air. Enough with the air stone. I've got the air pipe already. Turn on pure oxygen. I don't have pure oxygen. I'm going to keep blowing in your mouth and stimulating your urethra with my fingers. <sighs> Use cling wrap to seal the container. I'm clinging all over you, baby. Keep talking. Oh, my God. What the hell's going on? Keep your fish in the container for at least two hours. Andrew? We got two minutes. We're not doing Andrew? two hours. We do everything what, fast. Is Who are you talking to? I'm talking to your audience, man. My audience? Is it time to do a podcast? Why, why, why am I in a bath? Why am I in a kiddie pool? You, What's going on? You've been dead. What do you mean? Someone killed you. We've all been dead. What are you, what are you talking about? No. We'll dead, then we'll alive, and then we'll dead. Hey. I get it. How was Jesus? How, how was Jesus? Yeah. Did you talk to him? No. Where? I didn't talk to anyone. What What do you mean I've, like, been actually dead or, like, like nihilistic dead? No, like, you've been oh, dead, dead dead, my friend. I just picked your body off the body farm. I never agreed to go to a body farm. Nobody agrees with uh with uh, the Grim Reaper, my friend. How, how was I? How did I die? What, what do you mean? It was like, egg like, related. Th okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, did I eat too many eggs and then I just like exploded? I don't seem to have. Exploded. Someone poisoned me. Stomach's you. intact. Someone poisoned me. Yeah. Was it you? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Who did then? One of your podcast guests, of course. <laughs> I just spoke to all of them. They all sent eulogies. Uh, some were overlong and uh, hard, you know, trying to be funny and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it sounds like a lot of people hated you. Oh. So, 
that sucks. But you're alive. Did anyone? You're back. Did anyone like me? Was anyone like sad? Uh, Lori was a little sad that there was no inheritance. Uh, Lisa Quigley was obsessed with the fact that her book may not be published by you since you were dead. Uh, Zach and Miguel uh, basically shit on you for seven minutes. Well, I I did pay for that, so. Well, no, no, they're verbally saying that they. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wait. So, how how did you bring me back to life? Why why am I so wet? Uh, what is all this white stuff? I could I couldn't find how to bring back a human being to life, so I yeah. looked up yeah. how to bring back a goldfish. It worked though. It worked. Does that mean I'm half goldfish? Let me tell you, your dick gills are pretty wet, my friend. Why is my urethra so, like, spread? Because I used my thumb rather than my pinky. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't know that's how you reanimate somebody. You just spread out the dick hole. That's how you do a fish. It's kind of like a reveal scotsy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Are you Max Booth the fourth now? I don't know what I am. Uh, am I un- am I undead? You're back. Am I a am I a, am I a ghoul? Uh, uh, you may not be a ghoul, my friend, but you're ghoul adjacent. Some might say ghoulish. Well, I so this is an episode. Is that why you have a mic going, or are you just like recruiting evidence for some science well, convention? I gotta tell you, you you were very excited about the hundredth episode. You, you said you wanted your favorite comedian, Norm MacDonald, to record something for you. Uh, yeah. For some reason, John Lovitz, next best thing, I guess, recorded something for you. John Lovitz? John Lovitz. The guy from, the guy from Rat Race? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Rat Race guy. He uh, he recorded something for you, and I figured if John Lovitz, that's how I found out you were dead, by the way, John Lovitz somehow knew first. Uh, I said, well, John Lovitz recorded for his 100th episode. I got to I got to get through this episode. So I had all the suspects send a eulogy so I could uh sift through the evidence and I got no closer to the uh to solving the crime. But it was a journey, man. Oh. It was a journey. Wait, so we don't know how John Levitz knew I was dead or knew to contact you? I we do not know. Do we know if he did it? Did he kill me? He may have. Did you did you consider that? No, never. You are a bad detective. <laughs> oh, might be, might be the worst. You know, this mustache doesn't give me any uh, deduction skills. I guess, especially since you've just, I think, have been blowing inside of me with that mustache. <laughs> That's right. It looks awful. Yeah. It's really, it's really damp. Your ingrown hairs may have come from outward. Oh my god! I guess we have to end the episode now. I, uh, I don't, I don't feel good. I have. Do I go to the hospital if I die and then come back as an undead ghoul? Take a nap. Take a nap. Read my manuscript. Okay. And uh, okay. cancel everybody else's contracts. Okay, yeah. Definitely definitely Lisa Quigley's, it sounds like. <laughs> Get rid of that one. Okay. Uh, how, how do we... How do I end this up? How do I end the podcast? I mean, I've never died and come back to life. I guess you just... Hey, how about you introduce yourself as Max Booth, the new Max Booth, the ghoulish Max Booth? Oh my god. Okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot. Can you blow into me as I do it? Just, yeah. just so I Okay. Oh. I can't I can't, I can't talk as you blow into me. Hello well goodbye. Thank you for listening to the one hundredth episode of, of Ghoulish. I am Max, an undead host, and uh thank you to Andrew hill built for like i guess hosting my big episode i didn't get to do it did, did, did they at least get to listen to the new, new theme song by kelby they did they did they did and we, we dissected those lyrics kelby's high up on the suspect list oh fuck he is yeah yeah but you know it's a pretty good song i have to say it's pretty good real with it okay great uh i don't know review the podcast on itunes if you want me to stay dead but alive. I don't know. But alive, yeah. I mean, usually I I end this with saying like live spooky, die spooky. I've done that now. Maybe you do maybe you reverse it. Die spooky, live spooky. Okay. And oh and, and remember uh, friends and fiends, die spooky, live spooky. 
Ooh. Are you going to laugh like a ghoul with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can't laugh. I can't laugh. Oh, no. How we do this, we are the truest Got these fangs super sharp, your shit toothless Cold hearted, yeah we ruthless All the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish In the graveyard, acting foolish Finna dance with the devil to no music Cold hearted, yeah we ruthless All the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish